Welcome to Choice Classic Radio. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and help keep this show alive by donating at choiceclassicradio.com. For more of your favorite old-time radio shows, join us on our companion podcast, Choice Classic Radio, Mystery, Suspense, Dramas, and Horrors, where we bring to you the most mysterious tales that the golden age of radio had to offer. And now, with 677 episodes made, airing on the Mutual Broadcast Network from 1937 to 1954, we bring to you The Shadow. <laughs> the Shadow Knows. <laughs> Lou Cole presents one of radio's most famous features, The Shadow. The story of the mystery man who strikes terror into the very hearts of shopsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Today we present The Shadow in one of his most remarkable adventures. A modern mystery of science and crime, The Phantom Voice. In just a moment, The Shadow begins his exciting adventure. Meanwhile... I'd like to tell you how you can safeguard the health and comfort of your family during these dangerous winter months. Burn Blue Coal. It gives you safe, uniform, healthful heat all winter long. And for valuable heating information that will save you real money regardless of the fuel you're using, send tonight for John Barclay's free 24-page book, How to Reduce the Cost of Heating Your Home. Address a postcard to Blue Coal... 120 Broadway, New York City, or to Blue Coal in care of this station. Don't miss out by delaying. Send for your free copy of How to Reduce the Cost of Heating Your Home right at the close of this program. Thank you, Lamont. This way, Margot. Lamont Cranston, where on earth are you taking me? We're on our way to the criminal court, Margot. The criminal court? Oh, a murder trial. Mm, This isn't a murder trial. Unless I'm badly mistaken, we're going to witness an assassination. What? An assassination. The assassination of the character and reputation of one of the most outstanding public men in America today. Oh, you mean Senator Durham? Yes. Say, I've been reading about his trial in the papers. They've certainly unearthed plenty of evidence that he accepted that bribe. Well, unless I've made a mistake in character analysis, that evidence is forged. Durham is more than a political figure, Margot. He's a statesman. He has an independent income. He's devoted his life to unselfish public service. Oh, he's a very wealthy man. Yes, Margot. Senator Durham has given away ten times the amount of money he's accused of taking as a bribe. Well, if that's true, Lamont, the whole thing doesn't make sense. Why should a man like that take a 15-year prison term for taking a bribe he didn't need? That's the point that worries me. Incidentally, didn't I see that the prosecution expect to spring a surprise bit of evidence today? Exactly. That's why we're here. Come along, Margot. Court's already in session. such outburst on the part of the spectators at this trial, and I shall order the courtroom cleared. Proceed, Mr. Defense Attorney. Your Honor, I have stated the case for my client. I have shown that by his record, it would have been impossible for him to act as the prosecution claims he has acted. And I have yet to see any proof that Senator Durham has committed any crime. I will now call Senator Durham himself to the stand to deny these lies in person. Senator Durham to the stand. Here I am. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, sir, of your God? I do. Proceed with the examination. Senator, you have heard the prosecution's accusations. 
that you did at some time during last December accept a bribe from the late Mario Rinaldi? Yes. What is your answer? I never accepted a bribe from anyone. My answer is the whole thing is a pack of lies. Order! Order in the court. Your witness, Senator Durham, you deny that on the 16th of December last, you received a visit from the late Mario Rinaldi in your room at the Maximilian Hotel? Why, no. He came to see me and I... Confine yourself to specific answers. Gentlemen of the jury... The defense has made much of the senator's long and seemingly illustrious career of public service. They would have you believe that, like Caesar's wife, the defendant, Senator Durham, is above suspicion. They braided witnesses to the stand who've told you of his philanthropies, of his unselfish devotion to public service, <coughs> of his blameless personal life in the past. That we do not contest, refute, nor deny. But unfortunately for Senator Durham, he is not being tried for his past. We, the prosecution, need but one more bit of evidence to complete our case. We have that evidence. Order. Order in the court. I beg leave to show the jury a soundtrack motion picture of a meeting between the defendant and the late Mario Rinaldi, whose bribe of $50,000 paid to the defendant is the basis upon which this case was brought to trial. Order. Order in the court. Has this motion picture a direct bearing on this case, Mr. Prosecutor? It has, Your Honor. Has the counsel for the defense any objection to the introduction of this type of evidence without due notice? Senator Durham has nothing whatever to fear from the introduction of any authentic motion picture record of any meeting of Mario Rinaldi and himself, even though the picture was made without the senator's knowledge. Very well. The projection equipment is in the courtroom. Will you order the shades drawn and the lights extinguished? Court attendants will please draw the shades. Again, I caution the spectators against any outbursts of any kind. Furthermore, no one will be allowed to leave the court until the introduction of this evidence is complete. You may proceed, Mr. Prosecutor. With the court's permission, we will place the screen in full view of the jury. Your Honor. Counsel for the defense has a question. For the sake of the record... Will the prosecution state at whose request this motion picture was made? It was made at the request of Anthony Vogel, an attorney of this city. For what reason? As a citizen interested in public welfare. Very well. Now, if the attendant will turn out the light. Silence in the court. The prosecution will submit affidavits to prove that this is an authentic film record of a meeting between Senator Durham and Mario Rinaldi on the evening of December 16th. You may turn on the machine. Yes, sir. Yes? Come in. Oh, hello, Rinaldi. I've been expecting you. Look here, Senator Durham. Why haven't I got the contract award on that Vester Street building? The money's been appropriated. You said you'd use your influence if we fixed you up. Of course. Of course, Rinaldi, I told you you'd get that contract for a consideration. But you didn't send me my present of 50000 for swinging it your way. So naturally, I... Oh, so that's it. Do you want to be paid off first, sir? Huh? Yes. And in cash. No checks. Okay. You'll get your 50 grand. Get me that contract. I'll be back in an hour with your money. Order. Order in the car. Order! Order in the court! That's the end of the film, gentlemen. It's a lie! A lie! I tell you, I never said that! Order! Order in the court! Your Honor! I object! My client never had such a conversation with Mario Rinaldi! That picture is a fake! One moment. Attendants will please turn on the light. Your Honor, allow me to remind the counsel for the defense that pictures do not lie. Your Honor, we do not deny that the meeting between Senator Durham and Mario Rinaldi did take place in the manner shown in this film, but we deny that any such conversation took place. Have you any proof of that? There are only two people who could know what went on in that room. Senator Durham and Rinaldi. And Rinaldi is dead. Do you deny the voice was the voice of the defendant? My client admits that it sounds like his voice, but it cannot be, since he never asked or received a bribe from the late Mario Rinaldi for any reason or purpose whatever. 
Your Honor, I ask a recess of this trial in order that the defense may have an opportunity to study this film and soundtrack. I object. I do not see how the due process of law will be impaired by a 24-hour delay. Section overruled. Court adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> Lamont, after seeing that talking picture of Senator Durham re- meeting Rinaldi and practically demanding a bribe, how can you, how can anyone doubt his... Margot, the Greeks had a philosophy that ran something like this. Only believe half that which you see and nothing you hear. Oh, but Lamont, that wasn't hearsay evidence. That was the senator speaking. That was his voice. Even he couldn't deny it. No man knows the sound of his own voice, Margot. Besides... Durham never spoke those words to Rinaldi. But you saw him. You saw the motion picture. Exactly. Because I did see him speak, I know he didn't say the things that were on the soundtrack of that film. What do you mean, Lamont? Have you ever watched the movement of a man's jaw muscles when he speaks certain words? You mean you know what he really said? No. No, his face was half averted from the camera. I couldn't see his lips. I don't know just what he did say, but I know he didn't utter the words we just heard. Oh, but Lamont, it was still the senator's voice saying those other things, demanding that bribe. I'd swear to you. Yes, and so will the jury, Margot. Unless something is done within the next 24 hours, one of the finest men in this country, an innocent man, Senator Durham, is going to be railroaded into prison for 15 years by his political enemies. I'm stopping here, Margot. I uh, want you to wait in the car, please. The lawyer's building. What are you going to do here, Lamont? I'm going up to the 25th floor, Margot. The shadow has an appointment with one of the most crooked lawyers in this city. Anthony Vogel was so interested in the public welfare that he went to the trouble of having a sound camera planted in Senator Durham's hotel suite. The night of December 16th. While we are waiting for the shadow to return, I would like to ask all homeowners a question. Do you want to save money? Of course you do. And you begin real saving when you cut down on the cost of heating your home. Here's the easiest and surest way to do this. Decide now to cook and heat with blue coal. Here's why blue coal is more economical. It is prepared especially for use in the home. And blue coal is Pennsylvania anthracite, the fuel that furnaces, cooking ranges, and parlor stoves in this section of the country were especially designed to burn. It is mined by the Glen Alden Coal Company, the world's largest producer of specially prepared home fuel. And every carload of blue coal is laboratory tested for purity and size before shipment. And you can always be sure of getting this superior home fuel because it is tinted with an unmistakable blue color so that you can easily identify it at a glance. In Waverly, New York, and vicinity, blue coal sales so far this winter are 27% ahead of sales for the same period a year ago. This increase in sales is because Waverly families have found out that blue coal does all I say it will do. So I urge all families throughout this region to try blue coal. Order a trial ton tomorrow. Ask for blue coal by name in any one of four sizes. Egg, stove, chestnut, or pea. You will find the name of your nearest blue coal dealer listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory under the name Blue Coal. That swell, Mr. Vogel. You certainly put it over. That sound picture sure turned the trick. Yes, but I'm still worried, Travers. Well, there ain't nothing to be worried about. Senator Durham's as good as on his way to the pen right now. Well, I won't feel happy until he is. When are you going to get me a wrestling bout, boss? Wrestling bout? Yeah, it's about time I was getting in the ring again. And, well, I could 
stand the extra dough. Forget you're a wrestler, Travers. You'll make more money in this racket as my bodyguard. Any calls while I was down at court? Yeah, Wilson phoned a couple minutes ago. Why didn't you say so? Well, you didn't ask me. What did he want? I wanted to talk to you. And hey, what do you suppose he wants? Dough? I've paid him all he's going to get. And maybe he's read in the afternoon papers what we're really using that soundtrack for. If he gets white-livered and talks... Well, maybe we should fix him so he can't talk, huh, boss? What do you mean? Well, he could fall out of that 15-story apartment of his, accidental-like. He'd only have to fall once. It might be a good plan. Okay, you want me to go over there now and take care of it, boss? No. No, there's no sense doing anything about him until we have to. But the first sign of anybody getting wise to what we're doing, then we'll arrange a neat little accident for friend Wilson. Well, now, Doc, now let's take a look at that Wesley murder case. <laughs> One case at a time, Mr. Vogel. What, what was that? Suppose we review the evidence of the case against Senator Durham. What? What sort of devil's trick is this? Who are you? I am the shadow, Vogel. But I, I can't see you. Nevertheless, Vogel, I am here in the shadows. Gee, what? Somebody's talking and nobody's here. Shut up, Travis. I'll handle this. Oh, you're the shadow. Eh? You come here to play your hypnotic tricks on me. What do you know about Senator Durham's business? I know everything about it. I've been listening to your interesting conversation about this Mr. Wilson. He seems to play an important part in your case against Senator Durham. Listen, Shadow, I've heard plenty about you. I don't want to fight you. How much do you want to keep out of this? Always the fixer. How much, Shadow? There isn't enough money in the world to cover up what you're trying to do, Bogo. Who is this man? Wilson. What part did he play in this scheme of yours? Oh, so you don't know. You're just trying to find out, are you, Shadow? Travis, lock the door. Okay, boss. That's locked. Melodrama won't help you, Vogel. What? If I can only see this guy, I can... Come on, Travis. We don't need to see him. What do you mean, Come over here. Give me your hand. Well, okay, but it don't make much sense. You'll see. All right. Stand up with me against this wall. Now... Stretch out your arms. Can you touch the side wall on that side? Yeah, I can touch it. Good. I can touch it on my side. Now, walk slowly to the other end of the room and don't let your fingers leave the wall. Oh, I get it. Then the shadow can't get past it. Huh? You're quick. Now, walk forward slowly. Slow, you fool. Okay. Well, I... I don't feel nothing. We're almost to the end of the room, boss. Maybe he got away. No, no, he, he couldn't go through the door. It's locked. The window is locked, too. Hey, boss, I felt something. Huh? I got him. I got a hold of him, boss. Uh, I can't see him, but I got him. I got the shadow around the throat. He's a man after all. Gee, strong. Would kill him, Travers. Maybe. Maybe he can. He's choking me. G give me a gap, boss. I'll shoot him. You don't need a gun. It'll make too much noise. He's waiting, boss. Kill him, Travers. Give him your famous stranglehold. If he doesn't let go, he'll kill me. Yes, yes, Shadow. This is where you die. Finish him off, Travers. I've got to hurry and take care of Wilson before he gets a chance to talk. I don't like it. Oh, you don't? 
Having a little attack of conscience, Wilson? Well, doing a job is one thing, but sending a man away to prison on a false charge is, is something else. So I, I intended to tell you that... Tell me what? Well, the fact that I refuse to let it go on any further. Oh, you refuse? Yes. Yeah. After all, Mr. Vogel, if I tell what I know about... Well, what are you going to do about it? Just this. Don't move, Wilson. Put that gun down. Don't be a fool, Vogel. I'm not the fool, Wilson. No. Then you're back to me. That's right. What are you going to do? I'm going to assist at a little accident. No. Walk to that window. Wait. You can't do this to me. You can't. Walk. Okay. Open the window. All right, Wilson. I'm up on the windowsill. Just a moment, Mr. Vogel. The shadow. I I thought Travis took care of you. You thought Travis took care of me, did you, Mr. Vogel? Well, I admit he's a good wrestler. But there was one little hole, Vogel, I learned in the Orient. That he didn't know. He had me beaten for a moment. It was my one chance to get you to lead me to Wilson. You mean... You followed me here? Yes. Yes, I followed you here. It wasn't very difficult to get away from Mr. Travers. It seems I arrived just in time for my proof. In time? No! Oh. There, Shadow, there's your proof lying dead on the floor. <laughs> You're crazy, Vogel. You're a fool. You'll get the chair for this. I'm not as crazy as you think. <laughs> so I'm a fool, am I, Shadow? Now, you're the fool for coming here. You're the fool the police will find locked in this room with Wilson's dead body. They'll find you. I'll see that they do. And here's the gun you killed him with. <laughs> Why don't you try the window, Shadow? <laughs> Shadow. Shadow. Wilson. I'm done for. Quick. Oh. Quick, Wilson. Give me the proof. The proof, Wilson. Mm. Mm. The proof that you framed Senator Durham. Mm. Mm. Come on, Wilson. Come on. Tell me. How did you frame Senator Durham? Mm. Wilson. <coughs> Wilson. Hello. 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 Unlock the door, Margot. Unlock the door. The key's on the outside. Oh, Lamar, I, I heard a shot and saw Rover running out, so I couldn't wait. What happened? I hadn't been so stupid. Waited so long. I wanted to find out their secret before I spoke. Now, now it's too late. Wilson is unconscious. I'm afraid he's dying. Rogel is outwitted. After all, Mr. Vogel shot me. You cold blood, he shot me. He burned for it. Wilson, 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 listen to me. Listen and think. Think. Tell me. How did you frame Senator Durham? Tell me that, Wilson. Tell me that, and I'll see that Vogel pays for doing this to you. Senator Durham, now I remember. I'll show you. Help me into the next room. I'll show you. We'll help you. Yeah. I'll get on the other side. Now, look. It's a recording studio. Yeah, that's right. It's my hobby. I'm an impersonator by profession. An, an impersonator? Yes. Yeah. Help me into that chair by the turntable. I impersonate people. I've imitated Senator Durham's voice dozens of times. I... <laughs> Quick. Hand me the microphone. Turn on the switch. There, I can't hold out much longer. Here's the microphone. Drop that needle on the wax record. Turn the switch. This is you, Wilson, speaking. I've just been shot by Anthony Vogel. He hired me to... Who was found shot in his apartment last night. 
I ask the court's permission to play it at this time. Permission granted. You may start the record now. Yes, sir. This is Neil Wilson speaking. I've just been shot by Anthony Vogel. He hired me to impersonate the voice of Senator Durham. It's my voice on the soundtrack of the picture shown at Senator Durham's trial. I'll show how I did it. Listen. Of course. Of course, Rinaldi, I told you you'd get the contact. There were considerations. But you didn't send me my present of $50,000 for swinging it your way. So naturally, that, that's how it was done. That's how I did it. Durham Dennison. You never heard of those words. Out there, I... <laughs> <laughs> Why, it's amazing, incredible. Your Honor, there is one more voice on the record at the end. Listen. The voice you have heard is that of Hugh Wilson, murdered by Anthony Vogel. He is the man who sought to frame Senator Durr. But Vogel failed. Just as in the end, all crime must fail. And all criminals pay the penalty of death. <laughs> Order, order in the court. Whose voice was that? That, Your Honor, is the voice of the man to whom Senator Durham owes his vindication. The voice of the shadow. Ladies and gentlemen, before the shadow leaves you, Here's John Barclay, Blue Coal's heating expert. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Barclay. Thank you, Ken Roberts. Good evening, friends. Just now, I'd like to offer you a friendly suggestion. To lose no time in sending for your free copy of my book, How to Reduce the Cost of Heating Your Home. This little book is attractively illustrated, and each of its 24 pages holds valuable heating information that is of interest to every homeowner. Problems such as the importance of clean furnaces, putting coal on the fire, how to bank a fire, and how to light a fire, are dealt with in the fullest detail. For example, on page 16, you will find steps to follow in getting the best results from your furnace in the morning, during the day, and at night. And friends, these are only a few of the 36 topics covered in my book. There is no charge for this book will be sent to your home absolutely free and postpaid. It is a part of Blue Coal's famous free service. So I earnestly recommend that you send a postcard tonight for your free copy of How to Reduce the Cost of Heating Your Home. Address Blue Coal, 120 Broadway, New York City, or to Blue Coal in care of the station to which you are listening. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. Friends, these books are going like wildfire. So write for your copy tonight. Address a postcard in a clear, legible hand to Blue Coal, 120 Broadway, New York City, or to Blue Coal in care of the station to which you are listening. Right now for your copy of How to Reduce the Cost of Heating Your Home. You have just heard a dramatized version of one of the many copyrighted stories which appear in the Shadow magazine. All the characters and all the places named are fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental.
America's finest anthracite, will again present another thrilling adventure of the shadow. Be sure to listen. And be sure to burn blue coal, the solid fuel for solid comfort. That concludes today's episode. We'd like to thank you and remind you to donate at choiceclassicradio.com. Remember, your donations make episodes like this possible.